Good evening and welcome to the University of Lincoln's Live Lounge. Um, I am delighted to invite you all here and I want you to use the chat, tell us where you're from, um, say hi, which plenty of you have done, so hi to you Megan, um, and tell us where you are in your status of your application. This is all about the University of Lincoln's offer for undergraduate students that are currently living in the UK, so our home students. Um, I am going to introduce my colleague today, who is Philippa Hill, and Philippa is the University of Lincoln's um, Student Administration Manager. Hi, Philippa. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Um, today, what we want is, Lucy, hello, you are wanting to study nursing. So what we're going to do is explain to you a little bit about um, the offers from Lincoln and if you've got any questions about the application process we are here for the next half an hour to be able to answer that for you. Um, we're going to kick off, oh we've got lots of people, Amelia is from Spalding, so fantastic. Um, we are going to kick off with just an overview of as to what the UCAS process is and where we're currently at. Philip, can you just sort of briefly give us an overview of how the process works? Okay, so um, as you alluded to in your introduction there, all home um, under or UK applicants applying for full-time study um, for an undergraduate programme apply through UCAS. Um, we're fairly in the middle of the cycle now, so we're, we, we're in our peak period of receiving applications from you all. Um, and what we do when we receive your application, we look at all the information that you've, you've provided us with, so including education history, uh, your personal statement, your reference, all of the experience that you've added in there. And then we'll review that and make an assessment on your application. Um, and then uh, we look to reply to you with that offer or, or the decision on your application. And that's pretty much it, really, in summary. Um, so, yes, we, we are, we're, we're seeing a high number of applications at the moment um, and we're making our way through those as we speak. We are. Thank you very much. So hang on, I can see a few people have got offers from us already, um, which is brilliant. We've got Seed who's um, received an offer to study biology here um, and you're not too far away in Nottingham, which is brilliant. Um, and we've got an offer for technical theatre and stage management, which is which is fabulous. So well done, Megan. Congratulations to all of you who have got an offer from us. Um, I know that we've had a lot of questions over the last sort of week or so about the fact that we have changed our offer, um, our published offers, um, our published entry requirements is what I should say. Um, is there, a, can you sort of just explain what our position is at Lincoln for that, Philippa? Yeah, so um, we, we reviewed our entry requirements again um, at the start of, of the application cycle because we recognised that um, the cohort that's coming in next year would still be quite significantly um, impacted by the pandemic and all of the, you know, the challenges that came with that in terms of studying and being at school at, at whatever stage you're at. So um, as a university, we've made the decision to reduce our entry criteria, which you will see on our website and in UCAS. And you may have already received an offer from us before we did that. Um, so you should have seen an update on your offer um, if that if that was the case. Um, you know, we we want to try and give as much flexibility as we can for our applicants this year again, and also to reassure you all that, you know, we, we value your application and we want you to come here and we appreciate the, the difficulties and the challenges that you may have experienced over the last few years. So that's why we've done it. Um, but if you do have any further questions about your offer, please do get in touch with us because we can explain it a little bit further if you want us to and, and look at that for you. Fabulous. We've got loads of questions coming in, Philippa. So I'm going to pick up a couple of those um, now so that um, we can get um, exactly in line with where we want to be with this chat. Megan, I'm going to come back to yours because we are going to come to the point of how you accept an offer um, and Philippa can explain that. Uh, but we've had definitely pages, one of them, but we've had a couple of questions already about when will accommodation open. Accommodation at Lincoln is super 
absolutely splendid. Um, <laughs> it really is amazing. Um, but at the moment, you, nobody has missed the opportunity. We are hoping that accommodation will be open um, in early spring. So you can register um, with our accommodation services on our webpage to let them know that you are interested in that opening, but we haven't got an official date yet. What I will do is assure you all, all of you that are looking for accommodation at Lincoln, that we will let you know um, when that opens. Um, so if you are holding an offer, we will email you um, and definitely look out for your emails um, and check your junk mail as well from us um, because sometimes they sneak down there. Um, there. We will also be doing a future live lounge, which is just purely on accommodation as well. So um, we can sort of do that and share everything you need to know about accommodation. Um, but it's well worth a look at our accommodation. Um, Harry has asked a question. So, Harry, I've had an offer which is conditional um, with that I get my grades, which I've already got and submitted. When do I get that change to unconditional? OK, Harry, that's great that you've already completed your qualifications. Um, so it's likely that you would have received an offer from us to provide those qualifications and evidence of those. So we are working through our responses um, to we've we've sent out a lot of um, inquiries out to applicants to provide further information. So we, we are working through those and we will get um, to your information. If you feel if you do feel that you've been waiting longer than you, you know you thought or expected, please do get in touch and we can chase that up for you and check your application. If you've if you've sent us your qualifications then we can check this quickly against your application and obviously ensure that you meet the entry requirements and if you do great and we'll change your offer to unconditional and then you can sit back and relax and wait for the start of your course and enjoy your enjoy your time harry that's like really um what this year is all about for you um jessica fox has asked a question i have an offer for midwifery congratulations that's amazing um, I was wondering how long after sending in evidence of qualifications I will be able to firmly accept the offer. And I guess really the question is um, how Jessica also needs to accept the offer. Mm -hmm. So um, accepting your offer, you um, if you've applied for, uh, to more than one university, you would wait for all of your offers to come back to you. And then once uh, all of your offers have been um, made or you've had responses from all your choices, you can then start to decide which is your first choice, which is a, a firm choice, and then which is your insurance choice. So um, if you've had all your offers back, um, you can make those replies um, to universities now and make those choices in your application. Um, if you've already sent um, evidence, Jessica, and we've again, it's a bit similar to Harry, is that we'll wait. We're we're going through all of the responses that our applicants have sent us, uh, and once we get to yours, we will check the qualifications and we will uh, make a decision on your application. But it sounds like you've already been made an offer. Um, perhaps and you just need to respond to that. So if that's the case, um, if you go into your UCAS application um, and you've had all your offers back, if you're applying for more than one course, um, please do accept the offer if you're intending to come to us um, and then we will follow up with uh, the checking of your qualifications um, that you've sent to us as well. Thank you. Um, we've had a couple of questions. One of them is from Kat. How long does it take to receive an offer? Now, what I would put in this caveat is for everybody watching, um, the admissions team, Philippa's team are working very hard at the moment because there's a huge amount of applications coming through between now and the 31st of January. But yeah. Philippa, what, what are we working on and what would be a normal sort of expectation? Um, so I think uh, normally we'd expect to reply um, to applications within a week, um, ideally. Um, but as you've just alluded to, um, we have 
um, peaks in, in our application um, submissions. So at the moment, we are receiving a, a high number of applications. So it may take a little bit longer for you to hear from us um, with a response to your application. Um, and also as well, just to mention here that if you're applying to a course that where you need to attend an interview or submit a portfolio or attend an audition, um, that that reply to your offer, sorry, replying to your application may take a little bit longer because there's the additional step in the selection process. So just something to take into account if you're applying to a course um, that has the, that additional selection process in it as well. But yeah, normally it's around a week, but like I said, at the moment, it may take a little bit longer due to, due to the influx in applications that we're receiving at the moment ahead of the, um, the, the 31st of January deadline. Yes, just like your sixth form heads, um, the, the admissions teams in the universities are, are working frantically to make sure that you've got all your offers as fast as possible. Um, we've got an off, we've got a question here. Um, my offer is contextual um, and stands at 96 UCAS points for LLB law. If I were to get CCD, not CCC, is there any wriggle room? Um, so do you want to I mean, a contextual offer is something that is fairly new for Lincoln, um, and there could be several people watching that don't quite know what that is or, or how it works at Lincoln. <laughs> Yep, so um, just to explain a little bit about contextual offers and then um, I'll answer the, the question that's been yeah, uh, posted no up there. Um, so contextual offers, um, they're, they're designed to uh, remove some of the bar barriers into entering into higher education and it considers all sorts of things and factors and personal circumstances and the impact that that might have on a student or applicant study. Um, so for example, rather than looking at just grades, um, as the only measure of potential, uh, we also look at taking into account factors such as where, where you live. So, um, so to be eligible for a contextual offer from us, um, we use um, data which shows you um, your potential or the, um, the rate of progression into higher education, whether that be high or low. Um, it's a funny name and it's taken us a while to get our heads around it. So it's called Polar Quintile Data and you can you can you are able to check whether you, you fall within um, that postcode area as well on um, on our website. Um, so we use uh, Polar Quintile 1 and 2 and that would be um, you would be living in an area where you'd be less or, or it's a lower rate of um, um, race of progression into higher education. So um, if you fall within that criteria, you you may receive, you will receive a contextual offer from us. And what that means is that the offer will be a reduction in the standard entry requirements that are currently advertised on our website and in UCAS. So um, if you want to find out if you're eligible for one of these offers, you can um, check that um, and check your postcode. And if you fall into that one or two um, quintiles, then um, you should receive a, a contextual offer from us. Um, in terms of your question, Trora, Tr um, yeah. um, so if you don't quite meet the entry requirements, um, you may still be confirmed, your place may still be confirmed on the course. Um, however, we also make um, alternative offers depending on the course you've applied for. There may be an alternative course that we offer a, a place to you on if you've not quite met the entry requirements for the course that you originally applied for. Um, in terms of law, um, there may be some alternatives there in the summer. Um, uh, but like I said, um, your place may still be confirmed if you still get the lower grades um, from your off from your original offer. Do your very best to get yes. those grades is, is the big <laughs> advice. Um, along with contextual offers, we also have another sort of um, offer in place for students, which is a memorandum of understanding. Again, another another odd word. Um, with some schools and colleges and um, it's well worth any applicants or anybody considering applying for Lincoln to actually see if your school is part of that 
Um, and any student at one of those schools and colleges would get a very similar offer to the contextual offer. Um, which, Philip, how does that work? If if you didn't know, but you got a reduced offer through this partnership, how what what would how would you first find out about that? Um, so if you receive um, an offer through the Memorandum of Understanding Scheme, um, then um, we um, will notify you through your offer. So it, it will say in your offer, in recognition of our agreement with your school or college, um, you received a reduced offer from us under, under this scheme. Um, you can contact contact us if you want some further information about that but also contact your school um, tutors and they may be, may be able to give you some more information around what that means for you but it's essentially a reduced offer to the standard entry requirements again so if you don't fall within the contextual offer range you may get a reduced offer through um, an agreement with one of our schools and colleges that we have those agreements with. We do. And they are, they're not just local, they're all over the country. So it's well worth asking your sixth form heads tomorrow if you are um, in school. Um, we have Olivia and um, Shauna working in the back room for us with all of this um, technology. And they have um, located our offer guide there. So have a look at that. And um, because that basically strips down all of the things that Philip and I are talking about and will guide you through your offer um, and how it works here at Lincoln. Um, let's go and ask um, another question that we have. Um, we have a question from Emily Davis. Hi, Emily. Um, I've had an offer, congratulations, to study English and creative writing. I've already responded to the offer. Is there anything I need to do with regards to my application? Um, no. So if you've already had an offer and you've responded to that, then um, it's nothing more that you need to do other than meet the entry requirements that you've been um, given as part of your offer. So, um, yeah, that will just sit there with us now until the summer uh, when we receive your results. And then uh, once we receive those, those results, we will make a further assessment and to make sure that you've met the entry criteria. And then you'll receive that notification through UCAS um, that um, whether you've been successful or not. And so it's just a case of sitting and waiting now and also cracking on with your studies and making sure that you meet those entry requirements um, in the summer. There are there's a couple of things you can do though so that you're not just that um emily we have offer holder days and english and creative writing will definitely be one of those um so you will have been emailed again check your junk mail if you haven't um sort of received the email yet and you will be invited to come to um, a series of offer holder days that are on saturdays there's one sunday even um and book a book on to one of those so that at least then you can come find out a little bit more about the course, um, sit with students that you're likely to be studying with in, in September, um, and it will give you a real taste and, and engage you in that subject right from the start. Um, the other thing is Unibuddy. We have a very active Unibuddy um, site, and you can join that um, and become engaged in all sorts of groups. There's all sorts of groups or social groups, not just sort of your subject area um, and chat to our students. Our students are here and you can chat to other people. So chat with those student, with those new students that you're likely to be working with and living with even. So there's accommodation group and all sorts of things once we get to that stage. Um, but, but it means that you don't just have to sit back and not be engaged with Lincoln. There's plenty that will be happening. Um, Lucy has got a question. So Lucy has asked the question, I have a conditional offer. Again, congratulations. And as you have mentioned, which you have, it was reduced. It mentions 96 UCAS points from two GCE A-levels or equivalent level three. I take two A-levels and a BTEC. Will all three be contributed? That's a really good question, Lucy. And lots of people have been asking us and emailing us that question, mm. actually. So I'm yes. sure. Yes, it's a very good question. Um, when we updated our entry requirements, um, we um, 
we should have worded it slightly different. So unfortunately, those first ones that we amended were a little bit confusing. Um, but now we've updated it to say that it's 96 points from a minimum of two GCE A levels or equivalent. So what that means is that we will take into account all of the points that you receive from all of the qualifications that you are currently studying. So don't worry, we won't just use your two A levels uh, to make up your points. Um, we will use all of your qualifications, um, three A levels or equivalent um, to make up that overall UCAS score. So yes, yeah, sorry, apologies. There was a, some slight confusion at the very beginning there, but we we have fixed that now. But I appreciate there's probably some applicants who have still got the old offer on their um, application, but please be reassured it is three from all of your qualifications. So we've just allowed that. That's so good luck, Lucy. Um, so you've got plenty to play with to get those 96 points. Um, Amelia has asked a question. She's also had her offer through. There's lots of offer holders here. Um, and will there be any applicant days happening in the future? As I just sort of mentioned, we call them offer holder days. Um, and there, there are plenty of those for all subject areas. Um, they will be starting on Saturday the 17th of February, which is the first date, and they run all the way through to Saturday the 27th of April. Um, so again, look onto our website. Um, if you go onto our website, you, you can look on um, Visit Us, um, and they, they are there to be able to um, book onto the appropriate one for your subject. So good luck. Um, Another question. Let's take, we've got loads of questions here, Philippa. So I'm going to take some more questions if that's all right. Yeah. Um, again, lots of questions about accommodation. Just if you've just joined us, just to remind you that our accommodation will open early spring. Um, and if you are an offer holder, we will absolutely let you know as soon as we know when that will be opening. Um, so next question is... Um, We've got questions about funding, um, which sadly, Philippa or, nor I are the experts at the university for that. We are more of an expert within the application process. But if HD Gaming, if you want to just um, private message us and we can let you know if you email us at email um, inquiries, if you email us at inquiries at lincoln.ac.uk, then we can um, give you an explanation from our funding team about that and help you out. Um, so we have um, a message from Rita who says, I applied for pharmacy and was hoping if you had any advice about an interview. Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, um, so I understand that um, our pharmacy interviews are, are done are conducted via group interviews. Um, so, um, but my advice is um, to prepare. I think the team. I understand that the team, the pharmacy team, they do send out lots of information prior to um, your interview. There may be a little bit of pre-reading uh, for you to do as well as part of the interview to make sure that you've received all of the information and that you've um, read all of the details of the interview um and as part of the invite um and my advice would be prepare um be confident um you know come across um try to come across really confident and well that will that will look really good in an interview um and just really do your best in the interview i mean i don't i don't I don't um, recall there being anything too technical in our pharmacy interviews. I think they're trying to gauge you as an applicant and your personality and whether you'd be suitable for the course. So, um, but do your research, um, do a bit of preparation, perhaps um, sit and do some practice questions. If you want to um, practice um, answering a few questions, then um, feel free to do that with your family or your friends. And um, that might make, make you feel a bit more confident when going into the interview. We've got another question from Con. Thank you. Good luck, Rita. I'm absolutely yes. certain you're yes, good luck. We've got a question from Con. I applied for classical studies in late November um, and, and haven't received my offer through UCAS yet, but have been sent this link. When will my offer come through? 
Um, I think to better understand your inquiry, Con, if you could um, contact us at admissions at lincoln.ac.uk, we can take a look at that because that is um, quite a long time for you to be waiting. So we're either waiting for something um, to be sent to us or there's something um, that's that we've missed or we, we haven't quite seen in your application. So um, please do get in touch with us, admissions at lincoln.ac.uk, uh, and we can look into that in a bit more detail for you. Um, so yes, you should have received something from us by now if we've, if we've got everything that we need to make you an offer. Thank you, um, and good luck with that. Um, Kimberly Marshall has asked a very good question, I think. Um, when do I need to accept my offer if I want to come to Lincoln? So there are some more key dates further down the cycle, aren't there, that people yes. just sort of need to be aware of. And definitely if you are a parent watching this <laughs> evening, um, because they're not always communicated to if you are a parent watching. So um, when would you need to accept if she wanted to choose us? So if, um, so if you've applied on or before the 31st of January, um, you should you should receive all of your offers back from all of your choices by the 16th of May um, and then um, universities then um, sorry applicants are then expected to reply to those offers by the 6th of June so for anybody that's applied on or before the 31st of January that is that the deadline that you're aiming for is the 6th of June to reply to your offers um, if you're applying after the 31st of January um, that that deadline is is a little bit further down the line uh, and that will be the 24th of July. So depending on when you apply uh, will depend on when you need to uh, respond to your offers. Uh, the majority of applicants will be within that first deadline. So, um, but I'm sure UCAS um, send notifications to you to remind you of when the deadlines are coming up and, and that you need to respond. So keep an eye out for that because we've got busy lives and we do forget. So keep your eye out for those and make sure that you've responded to your offers by um, the deadline and we will i can absolutely assure you as well kimberly that we will send you a nice handy guide through the post um, with those dates on as well so mm -hmm. keep an eye out for those also if you attend an offer holder day we've got some publications that will also tell you those dates so um get them on your calendar so that you don't miss them because Certainly the 6th of June is when lots of people will be um, head down into their um, A-level exams. So um, don't miss out on doing that. Um, we've got an anonymous um, question about does UOL, University of Lincoln, support your young athletes? And yeah. what's the University of Lincoln's opinion on sport? There is no section on UCAS about sports apart from personal statement. And that is absolutely true. Um, so in your personal statement, I think it is key to sort of highlight any sort of sport that you're involved in, if you are sporty, obviously. Um, but we have we do have um, a section for a sports, a sports bursary um, at the University of Lincoln. So I would suggest looking on the University of Lincoln's website and our funding and scholarships page and that will highlight the criteria for that. We are also very active within um, the books leagues, the university books leagues um, and athletics is one of those areas um, and so you can join the society. We have well over 130 different um, sports and societies, athletics being one of those. Um, and so please, please have a look and get involved. And um, we will be doing a session with Students' Union um, fairly soon. Um, but but please, sport is sport is is very active at Lincoln um, as any other university. So definitely get involved when you are here. So we've got another question from Lucy. Um, from Lucy, she has said, sadly, she went through a bereavement in year 12. Will her attendance during sixth form affect her offer with contextual? I'd put this on mine, but received a conditional offer. OK, so um, just a couple of things there. So um, when we're making contextual offers at the moment, we're only taking into account 
um, postcode data in in that um, part in, in that part of your offer. However, if you do, if you have experienced any other mitigating circumstances, um, we will take this into account when we receive your results in the summer. So if, for example, you don't quite meet the requirements of your offer, we will look at any mitigating circumstances that you have submitted as part of your application and take that into account as part of our final decision. So if you've included that in your application, that's that's brilliant and we're aware of it and we will uh, look at that when we, we are processing or making final decisions in the summer when we get your results. Absolutely. We'll just take a couple more questions, um, Philippa, because we are yep. at half past five. Yep. I apologise. They are these questions are coming through thick and fast. And um, apologies if we don't manage to get through to all of them. What I suggest you do is please, please, please email us. Email us at inquiries at lincoln.ac.uk or admissions at lincoln.ac.uk and we will get back to you this week because there's lots of questions. Um, we've got a question um, from Shrek's. Shrek's cousin, interesting, <laughs> it's very interesting. Um, when do we start applying for loans and grants? So the um, the Student Finance England don't publish just yet the actual date that they will go live. Um, but given our experience over the last couple of years, Philip, it's usually been around the beginning of March, hasn't it? Yes, yeah. And at that point, you can apply for your tuition fee loan and also your maintenance loan. Um, but as, again, we will absolutely let you know when you when you need to apply for those and when they are open. There's usually a window between sort of early March to sort of um, the end of May uh, when you can get that application in. Um, and you'll certainly need to speak to your sort of parents and, and carers um, to work alongside you for that application. So that's some sort of pre-work that you could do um, to find out what, what sort of documents you need to apply for those. Um, let me scroll down to get another question. Um, how do I start for Megan? Quick question. How do I sign up for offer holder days? Megan, go on to our website. Go on to our website. Um, Olivia is ticking along along the bottom there, the link that you need to do to apply for offer holder days. Please apply, please come, and we would love to see you at those um, open days. Um, Athena Lunn has asked a question. Can I accept my offer from Lincoln even if I haven't received all of my offers yet? Uh, yes, you can do this. But what you would need to do is withdraw from um, your other choices. So at this stage, if you haven't had a, res uh, a response back from your other choices, um, but Lincoln is your choice and that's where you want to go and you've had an offer, you can accept the offer, um, but what you'll need to do in your application is withdraw from all of your other choices at this stage. If you've already had all of your offers back, um, the, the difference is, is that you would decline um, those offers rather than withdraw them. So, uh, but yes, if that's, if that's what you want to do, that's great for us. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the advice um, to withdraw from your other places and then accept us as your firm choice. Fabulous. So I'm going to ask one final question. Um, if I'm predicted to meet the entry requirements, how come I was given a reduced offer from M? OK, so um, we receive your predicted grades from your teacher or your college tutors. Um, and they're a guide as to what you're likely to achieve. So um, we will, we will make you an offer not based on your predicted grades, but what our entry criteria is. So as long as you're studying the three A-levels or equivalent qualifications, um, your predicted grades, um, it won't really matter what your predicted grades are. You will still receive an offer from us. And um, you have been lucky to receive a reduced offer from us as well based on that. So um, you need to meet the requirements of your reduced offer, even though your, your predicted grades are higher than that. So it sounds like you're in a good position. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> are. And you can sort of um, just have that confidence and that reassurance um, of that as you move into exam season. 
Right, I'm going to close now. Thank you so much, Philippa. You are, as ever, the wealth <laughs> of all sorts of knowledge. Oh, thank um, you. I don't know what we'd do without you. <laughs> Absolutely. Good luck to everybody. We would love to see you during this cycle. Please don't let this be um, the end. We want you to engage in everything that we do. So get involved on Unibuddy, speak to new to the new applicants please come to, please come and visit us um, and we have got a series of these live live lounges um, coming up over the cycle so we've got um, accommodation as we've said accommodation student well-being student support um, and all sorts of different ones throughout the season and students union so please join us again thank you for your time this evening we look forward to seeing you at the University of Lincoln thank you very much Thank Good you. Night. Good luck, everybody. Bye.